Hello, my name is Jason Moranto, and this video is going to be all about how to work with HDR Light Studio Live version 3 within Maxwell Studio version 2.6.10. Now, there are some brand new interactivity here between these two software within this new version of Maxwell, so I just want to cover this really quickly. I want to make sure, first of all, that we have a camera and an object to work with here. Now, you'll notice right now that my EV is 14.966. What I want to do is just set that to 8. And what that'll do is that'll allow me to get a much better EV. I'm going to go ahead and launch fire. And you'll see right now that we're getting this very overexposed render. The reason why is because we're currently using the environment type of sky. And with an EV number of 8, that's going to be really blown out. We're just going to change this over to image based. We're going to come down here and we're going to change the background type from HDR image to HDR light studio. And then we're going to go ahead and launch HDR light studio. Now, right off the bat, nothing's going to happen. And the reason why is because until we actually put something in the canvas, there's nothing for fire to work with yet. So let's just go ahead and drop something in the canvas. And like so, you can see quickly that we're working within whatever's dropped into this canvas as our lighting for this object. So let me just go ahead and make some quick changes here. So I'm just going to go ahead and colorize this guy, maybe something like so, say OK, and drop that up like so. And maybe I'll turn off the background so that you can see clearly what's going on here. So I'll just go ahead and drop in a few more items here. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly sort through these guys, see what we have that might be interesting for. OK, I like that guy. So we'll select that. And maybe in this instance, I'll make this much bigger. So I'll go ahead and scale that up 50 and 50. And we'll colorize this as well. So maybe we'll make this a particular Kelvin temperature, maybe a simulated north sky. So we'll say OK. You can see how that goes. I'll go ahead now and turn that background back on. And you can see that we've set up our lighting really quickly here. Now, anything can be changed while we're working with an HDR Light Studio Live. But let's say that we're done with this. Let's say that we're happy with the way that we've set up our lighting here. And now I just want to go ahead and say render out this HDR so that we can render out a full resolution render with Maxwell Studio. So I'm going to hit render. I'm going to come over here and just pick a size. In this case, I'll take the middle size. We're going to set this for EXR, and we're going to browse from my computer. I'll put this on the desktop. And we'll just call this something like test and hit save. It's going to export that HDR. And then what will happen once we're done doing that is this whole situation over here with our environment will change from HDR Light Studio to HDR. So we'll just go ahead and have a map in here, and then that will be copied to all of these other channels because we have same as background set for all the other channels. And it's almost done. You'll see that pop up. There it is, HDR image, test EXR, and all of those are going to get the same information. So we can just go ahead and close this for right now. And I'm just going to go ahead and say render. And it's going to go ahead and begin to render that within Maxwell. Now, this will take just a second. And you can see that's popping up right now. It's using that EXR that we've output. And you can see the green light here and the white light here. And let's just go ahead and say stop this for a second. Let's say we want to make some changes to this. Well, we can just come back over here, change this from HDR image to HDR Light Studio again, launch this again, and then we can select whatever light we want. In this case, let's say I want to change the spotlight. I can change the light source. And in this instance, maybe I'll just go ahead and just scroll down through these guys until I find something interesting. Maybe I like that gobo there. So we'll say select that. And then we'll go ahead and colorize this, maybe something a little bit more strong, like so. Say OK. And we'll just use fire for a second so that we can preview what's going on with this guy. So maybe I want to move this over to this side, like so. So you can see we've got a fairly strong change here. Maybe I'll even change the background here. So I'll come over here, select that, change the color to a Kelvin. Maybe I'll use a white fluorescent. And we'll say OK for that. So. That's done, say OK. And you can see we've got a really severe difference here in what we started from. So I'm done with that. Let's say render again. OK, we're just going to save it right back out to the same test EXR, hit save. It's going to take another second to export that. And again, what's going to happen is this setting here is going to change from HDR Light Studio to the HDR image. And then it's going to go back to that test EXR again. So this will just take you know a few more seconds to export. The larger the size that you output, the more detail, but it'll also take longer to render. So we're done with that. You can see we're back to HDR image. I'll just go ahead and say render again. 
and it'll take a second to collect all that data as far as Maxwell is concerned, and then it'll begin to render. Now, you'll see that we get a completely different render because we've changed that lighting in HDR Light Studio Live. So you can see how fast and intuitive this workflow is in Maxwell 2.6.10. And I'm really happy with the way that this has worked out. And of course, HDR Light Studio Live version 3 has introduced a whole lot of new and interesting features that will make your life a lot better when you use these two softwares in conjunction with each other. Now, one of the best reasons for using these two softwares in conjunction with each other is the speed. You can see right now my benchmark is pretty absurd and it will only continue to get faster. As a matter of fact, I think this render is going to be done in something like 45 seconds flat. So hope you enjoy using these two software together and I hope this video was helpful to you to understand how they work together.